it was soaring across the field when it actually we were dumbfound, I think, and uh, uh, it was so low you could see the oval shape of the uh, of the object with a red light in front and a red light to the rear of it. it appeared to be cigar shaped, maybe the size of an, uh, an automobile. Uh, from red light to red light, there appeared to be illuminated white lights the, the whole length of it. I thought I was going to look in the window and see something extraordinary because we were that close. Uh, I really didn't see anything inside. There was no movement, no uh, objects, whatever. So uh, it just soared and hovered, you know, just, uh, just actually unbelievable. It almost seems like a dream, really, that uh, what we did see. It seemed like a dream. Yeah. Uh, it soared over this direction, across here, and over this tree line. And later that night, I think it was within a half an hour or less, uh, there were several sightings in Mansfield of uh, similar type descriptions. Just after midnight on April 19, 1966, four police officers and a family of three witnessed one of the most extraordinary events ever to take place in the town of Sharon, Massachusetts. All four Sharon policemen were more than willing to tell us a story which has been echoed thousands of times by many reputable persons throughout the world since 1947, when Washington pilot Kenneth Arnold coined the term flying saucer after a close-range aerial sighting, the first highly publicized case of this century. Raymond Fowler of Wenham, Massachusetts, has been investigating UFO phenomena for many years. I saw a daylight disc myself back in 1947 uh, in uh, July, when I was uh, working on a farm as a as a teenager uh, in uh, 1947, the interesting thing is that the next day that the local newspapers had uh, a big story in the front page stating that flying discs, as they were called then, were seen in that particular area that very day that I saw this particular object uh, go over. Uh, with a falling leaf motion. My first thought was that it was a parachute and uh, because it was was going sort of like this and I thought boy it must be someone bailing out. I didn't see any plane or anything and I looked for shroud lines under it and no shroud lines, no person and it kept on descending like this into the distance uh, falling very very gently uh, like a falling leaf. The uh, flying saucer came from that direction came across, stayed out there a while, then it came back, it hovered over here, and it took off in that direction. And it, to my estimation, it looked like a, you know, a football. It had flashing lights, all the lights going around in a circle around the area of it. And uh, it's a, you know, it looked like a football to me with a whole mess of flashing lights. These were white windows that appeared to be mullions. This was all white lights. This is what the chief and I were trying to look in to see if we could see anything. But that give you, I'm not a good artist, but that rough idea. There were cars moving up and down the street. As it passed from that tree line in a westerly direction, it blocked out several of the cars, and as it moved, the cars appeared again underneath it, which proved to me that we were looking at a solid object. It either was round or, uh, as it appeared to me then, football shape, and it was no higher and no further away than those fir trees from us as we walked towards it. None of you had seen any uh, aliens, is that right? No. 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 And uh, what is your own personal theory, we'll go down the line here, what your personal theory is about this, what it actually was, where it might have been from, do you have any idea, have you harbored any theories over the years of what it might have been? Well. To myself, I would say, uh, I saw it, I left here, I spoke with the uh, Air Force, was it the Air Force yep. that came down? And after that, I just put it right out of my mind. You kind of blocked it out? I blocked it right out. You didn't want to think about it, or you just forgot about it because I it was just another incident? I didn't want to have any more to do with it, to be honest with you. I figured uh, what I saw, I told them what I saw, and that was enough for me. I, uh, it was a, an experience in itself, and I didn't want to go any further with it. How about yourself, Chief? Any personal theories? No, well, it was something unique, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it could have been something that the, the country has that uh, doesn't care to discuss or reveal. And, uh, or it could have been something uh, from another planet. Either one. Uh, it had to be one or the other, I would say. I might add that uh, it was during this particular period of time that uh, several sightings 
were made of similar objects. The one that uh, I recall uh, vividly was the one in New Hampshire, and a great deal of credence was plus placed in that sighting, as was this. You know, we have uh, four, I think, responsible people here who saw something. Sh shortly after the sighting, I think it was a couple of weeks, Look Magazine did a uh, profile on, on a happening in New Hampshire where uh, a uh, uh, married couple was uh, supposedly taken onto their ship and, and uh, given physicals on board uh, the object, whatever it was they seen. And uh, I was working a four to 12 fill-in shift. It was maybe 10 o'clock at night at the uh, police station. Uh, I was really into the article. And uh, I think at that time, uh, was, my concentration was so much on the article, the door opened at the police station. and. Uh, I, uh, I think I felt like I hit my head on the uh, ceiling, my feet uh, don't ever touch the floor, so it just startled me, so it was just kind of a strange uh, experience. Big culture. <laughs> Did you feel as if uh, you know, anything like that might have happened uh, that you're unaware of, that you were Well, no, it, it just seems strange that we never made more of it, that, uh, like I say, if you see a, a, a bus smash up or something, you'd... Uh, You'd say, "Holy smoke! What's happening? And why? Why?" And then probably talk a lot about it. This thing here just seemed to go away by itself, and uh, I've often wondered why we didn't discuss it a lot more or, or, or think a lot more of it. I understand that you did some uh, a radio interview with WNEW in New York, just following this. Yes, correct. Uh, who participated in that? Uh, I did. When it moved in front of us, it took shape, and there was a uh, red light in front, a red light to the rear of the object. There was what appeared to be a long strip of glass that appeared to be a window, and you could see the curvature of the glass indicating... This man saw a UFO. He is not a saucer nut. Not one of those people who claimed to have sought the little green man or to have flown to Venus in an exotic spaceship. He is instead a policeman, a normally calm and skeptical type who saw something that shook him up. It may shake you up a bit, too. <laughs> Sunday news close up. Tonight, the Sharon Saucer. The Air Force adopted a standard posture to meet inquiries from the public and from the media. For all flying saucer reports that could be ascribed to natural causes were given prominence. While Truly puzzling cases, what we would call today high strangeness cases, were kept away from the public and the press. When the press on its own insisted on statements, an ad hoc explanation was contrived, under no circumstances was any statement to be made which could add fuel to the public's curiosity and concern. How can we correlate this information? How do we know what we're being told? We probably don't, right? We only, uh, they only reveal what they want to reveal. And again, you know, it's a, it had to be one of the, the other is what all I'm saying. It had to be something that we had that was, uh, they didn't care to reveal what it was or uh, uh, something from outer space. The government didn't cut us in on any information. The Air Force didn't communicate with us as, as to what they did or didn't find. NICAP came out and, and made the investigation, took the radiation readings in the field. So they did make an intensive investigation of the scene, remained in the area for maybe three days. Matter of fact, Mr. Fowler wrote a book and included this in his book. Uh, I think I mistakenly said before that the, uh, the Air Force took the radiation readings. They didn't, it was NICAP really that uh, oh, I see. the reading. We understand from the uh, officers on duty that they are unaware of the Air Force uh, coming in and saying anything to them. Is that uh, your understanding also that the... The, the officers office may, may have been unaware, but the police chief wasn't unaware because uh, uh, Captain Zelensky at Otis Air Force Base informed Hanscom Field to uh, perform the investigation because they were closer and they dispatched intelligence officers to the uh, police station. They did not interview the officers, as far as I am aware of, they just interviewed the police chief and told him to keep the blotter confidential and to keep a separate blotter uh, from henceforth uh, and let them know about the sightings. Did you notice any um, electrical?
electromagnetic effects, any radiation uh, effects after in the area? What, what we did that night was notify through uh, Officer Jones's urgings, uh, he notified uh, Otis Air Force Base on, in the, uh, on the Cape, who the following day uh, brought here or flew over here a, a radar plane that circled this particular area for, uh, for uh, uh, quite a period of time. Uh, my understanding was that they did uh, find uh, radiation uh, readings in the field that were uh, above normal. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did flyovers to do that? We had a radar plane flying over the uh, area here for most of uh, the following morning. The uh, government authorities came in and uh, said that uh, further incidents on this, uh, this t of this nature would have to be included in a separate police blotter? Uh, I'm unaware of that. The chief at that time suggested that we keep a, a separate blotter for all incoming calls on UFO calls because we did receive uh, uh, many curious calls and also people saying they had seen sightings or whatever. But it wasn't due to the government uh, saying that? I'm unaware of it. It could have happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, did the government say anything in terms of, you know, don't, don't publicize this? Again, I'm unaware of that. I wasn't the chief at the time and uh, perhaps it was uh, said to the, my predecessor, uh, it wasn't said to me. Mm -hmm. Are either of you aware of that? Uh, I would know on that the chief is correct on that. On April 22nd, the United States Air Force investigated the case and talked to the uh, police chief at that time and told him not to release the blotter and to keep all such reports on separate blotters and keep them confidential. One of my investigators, Ernest Reed, was a private detective and threatened to go to the attorney general if he didn't release the police blotter because it was within the public domain. The police chief said that he had rather face the Air Force than the Attorney General and uh, released a copy of the blotter. And of course, that's part of the, the case. Ernest also took radiation readings of the field uh, over which the object hovered, and the uh, radiation was many, many, many times above the background radiation for that particular area. Someone on Wall Mall Park Street also saw it uh, that night. Can you tell me about that? Do you remember that? Uh, there were several other sightings that night uh, by people in, in, in Sharon that had seen it, uh, I guess, at a greater distance than we had seen it here. But they had seen it, uh, uh, wasn't it the previous night or something? Someone had said the... Uh, yeah, yeah, night, yeah. 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 Also on Wall Mall Park Street, there were other sightings over the years. Do you recall any? Yeah, there's so many things that went on after that, and we heard and read so much, uh, I'm not clear on, on who's seen what, other than there were several other people that did say they had sightings in Sharon at various times, is that right? Raymond Fowler 